458 Talk is the number. We go back to the phones. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? Um, from the time of the Revolution till the mid 1930s, uh, uh, the common wage in the United States was a, a dollar a day. And, uh, 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 it tied the, 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 the money supply to what a person generated in a day's time, the value that they generated. Uh, with the, with the IRS, uh, uh coming in, uh, uh, they disconnected the, uh, the value of money to production. Uh, it became a, 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 a form of imagination. That's a that's a good way of putting it. I became a form of imagination. At what point, really, does anything that we do or anything that we create have any value if the things that we are using to trade for it have no value? That's exactly right. Uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, when a when a when a man swaps a day's wages for a, for a dollar, uh, 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 the person that that's paying him the dollar says that's a dollar's worth of work. Uh, nowadays, it's just uh, it, like I said, it's just a, 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 an imaginary figure. Well, I think it's worth so much money, and uh, it doesn't actually add up to that. And how is it an income, anyways? Because you're trading something for something else. It's an equal swap. How have you gained from it? When you go to work, you work one hour. Let's just say for the dollar. I worked one hour for the dollar. How are you gaining from that? I mean, have you gained something extra? You gave that person your hour of your time. So how did you create extra income? It was an even swap. It was a fair trade, straight across, an hour for a dollar. There was nothing extra thrown in there. And one of the things here that, too, is really so insidious about what's going on right now, not just with the debt crisis, but with the the general situation in which they're pumping more dollars into the economy, making everybody's dollar worth less, is that they are really stealing well, they're stealing from people. It's a hidden tax, but they're, they're, I mean, they're especially stealing from the from the low wage earners. If you think about it, if you earn, well, we, we use the, the example you used, a dollar, a dollar a day, you go and you put it in the bank so that you can have that dollar tomorrow to buy food with. But tomorrow, your food prices have gone up to twice what they were today because of inflation, because of the extra dollars being pumped into the economy. They're stealing from you. Right? That's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So how do we fix it, Winston? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 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 that's the reason we call this problem corner, right? It's <laughs> well, uh, uh, not solution corner. <laughs> well, so problem corner is the Monday through Friday. This is Patriots Lament, so I guess we Patriot, are. We're, we're, I, I apologize. No, no that's all right. That's all right. right. We're, we're lamenting the situation here, I suppose, too, to a certain degree. I, may I suggest that we unplug? If you can enter into a working relationship with a boss who's willing to pay you not in dollars but in dry goods or in gold, yeah. The, well, the nice thing about dollars is the um, universal acceptance right now. You know, gold is still money internationally, but it's difficult to have transactions clear through banks and stuff like that. Um, and so that's why people transact in in paper dollars. Um, also. In the U.S., you know, there's so many laws prohibiting you from transacting in anything except Federal Reserve um, debt notes, okay. basically, right, that uh, it prevents the rise of any other currency. You know, you were talking about the dollar as representing um, a day's work. Well, a dollar was originally defined to be a certain specific weight of silver. It was uh, 372.5 grains of silver, I think. And... So a dollar was a it was a fixed amount of some commodity, right? And whatever it could buy, that value was imputed by the market, right? If if you grew wheat and you priced your wheat, you were saying, you know, I think my wheat is worth this many grains of silver, or I think this many grains of silver should buy this much wheat. So so the individual participants in the market pricing their goods decided what the value of a dollar would be, right? It was the it was the people who held money who decided what the value of that money was. When we switch to a debt money system where the value is determined by the Federal Reserve in this case, they set interest rates, they control the money supply, it immediately strips half of the market power out of the people's hands. Uh, Money is half of every market transaction, right? You exchange money for goods. Money makes up half of that transaction. 
So the day the Federal Reserve was founded, half of our economy was socialized immediately because the ability for the market to impute value not only on the goods but on the money that was being used was stripped away from them. I mean, the inflation deal is basically – inflation is basically a tax. I mean, they're taxing you all over again with inflation because you – all of a sudden you have half of what you had. But it, 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 the, the worst part about inflation is it taxes the unsophisticated investor, right? The, the, the sophisticated investor understands debt money and real interest rates and inflation and – uh, spreads, you know, they can borrow money out at 3% and seek a 6% return and make 3% on the spread, and they have time to do all that stuff. But the unsophisticated investor, the low income, you know, minimum wage earner or whatever, I mean, they don't like me, right? They don't, ha they don't understand that, and they don't have the time to understand that because they're busy trying to make ends meet. And a debt money system specifically penalizes them because they can't understand the money system and the credit system because it's too complicated in a way in which they can actually beat inflation. Uh, so so that's part of the reason that people in the financial sector don't necessarily have a problem with the debt money system. They can make money on the spreads. They can go into the international or foreign exchange market and buy cheaper currencies and do all this stuff because they they understand that. They have that education. But the, the point of money is not to be some complicated investment instrument. It's just supposed to be a medium of exchange. And it is when the market is allowed to determine its value. But when that value is stripped away, and the government assumes that role, then um, then the average guy suffers the most. Or Dave, quasi government. Dave, you, you you said something about there are so many laws that pre that prevent people from d doing business outside of using the the federal currency. Yeah. Now, the, the prohibit and prevent are two different things. I mean, they they may prohibit us from doing an awful lot of things, but they can't really prevent us from doing anything if we don't give them the consent to do so. Yeah, you can you can do whatever you want. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, freedom or liberty or whatever you want to call it is inherent. You know, any of us can go and do whatever we want. What stops us from doing that is um, our judgment and our our decision making capability. But uh, as for you know money specifically, like holding gold, well, there's there's a really great gold coin shop in town. You can go down and buy gold and silver. There's nothing actually prohibiting you from doing that here locally, and mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. Encourage people um, to do that, absolutely. Right, but as far as as far as internationally, like you used to be able to, it used to be very easy to bank overseas or to um, transact in other currencies if you so choose, and uh, this allowed people to you know, have some competition with the Federal Reserve. They could move their money elsewhere. They could give a vote of no confidence. We don't like your money. We think it's garbage. And so the, of course, these are all called loopholes, right? And what, what sort of patriotic American wouldn't want to use Federal Reserve? <laughs> That's right. So, so they cracked down on all those. Buy war bonds, too, while you're at it. Right. And, and who, you know, who lost their shirt in the revolution by buying uh, continental notes, right? The most patriotic Americans. They bought these notes that got inflated to nothing. And the, and the Tories, uh, you know, they actually did fine because they held on to their gold. Yeah. But um, anyway, so they actually haven't prohibited foreign banking for U.S. citizens yet. What they've done is the IRS has gone to all of the other tax jurisdictions in the world and said that if you don't turn over financial records of all your U.S. clients, um, we will do nasty things to you, right? We'll, we'll audit you or we'll, we'll get in the banking system, which the IRS is already deeply in, and make life hell for you, basically. Um and so, and they've gone after they've gone after all these different tax jurisdictions. They've even gone after the uh, the Swiss government. And so, Swiss banks used to be a safe place to put your money anonymously, and now the IRS has gone after the Swiss government and said, you know, with the the power and force of the U.S. military behind us, you must show us all your U.S. client banking records. And so, there is no anonymous banking anywhere in the world for U.S. clients. And as a result of that, most banks around the world just won't accept U.S. depositors because they don't want to file paperwork with the IRS. I've got an idea that might be, a, be able to be a loophole around that, but I don't want to say it on the radio for fear <laughs> that, that someone might uh, be listening. Maybe so, Lisa Murkowski uh, could introduce a wonderful uh, bill to crack down on unpatriotic Americans. That would be a fine way to govern. That certainly would. Hey, thanks for the call. 458-TALK is the number. See if we can get a couple more in here. Good morning. Who's this? Yeah, this is Chris. Chris, what's on your mind? Oh, yeah, I was just calling back again. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the biggest evil that, that our government has imposed upon us is property tax. I, and, oh. and I think one of you guys said last week, and I heard it last week, and I don't remember if I heard it on the radio where, but uh, it, was a, it was a quote of Henry David Throes that, uh, you know, uh, 
it's, it, life is too precious to waste it earning a living. You know, and, and with, with the, with the government imposing a property tax upon you, you, they're forcing you to use their currency. Yeah, that's true. And, Absolutely. and with, so, so in effect, you have to earn, you, you have to continually earn the right to stay on your property. <laughs> right, you can't just force, live there. Yeah. Which is, it basically, it, it's, it's for slavery, essentially, by our own government. And, uh, you know, and, you know, and most, a lot, you know, a lot of people, you know, you got, you got an acre or two of land, which isn't a whole lot of land. And, uh, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can live off of that. You, you don't have to, you know, you can, you can grow your own gardens. You can, you can have some animals there. You can rotate crops. You can, I mean, you can pretty much essentially survive off of that, you know, one or two acres of land if you, you know, if you were really, uh, diligent in what you did with it. You know, and, um, the, but the government just coming along and saying, you, you know, well, you have to pay taxes on that. Then it, then it forces you to dab one with their currency. And, and in that way, they just take it and they give it to somebody else. That was one of the themes when my brother and I ran for borough assembly last year was the whole, I mean, our, our major theme was property, the right to own property and property taxes was, it's stealing, it's theft. I mean, it's the most evil thing a government can do is a tax you on your property if you look back with uh, the people that the smart people hundreds of years ago that had all the brains and the knowledge and everything that came up with this idea of individual liberty and free property owning your own property they would they couldn't even imagine I mean that was what kings did it's just like our ad we said the lords of the borough and the people that own the property here are just serfs because we're paying a duty to live on their property we live on their land private property from John Locke he talks about private property extensively you have the right to own that land and no one has the right to take it from you tax you on it or anything and I hate property taxes I hate the borough for having property taxes. I look over there at the building across the river here and I despise those people. I despise them with everything I have because they steal from me because I own property. And we have representatives over there that said, well, you know, it's your the cost of having the privilege of living in this <laughs> borough. Really? Who made you God? I didn't ask you to come in here. I don't have a written contract with you, Jack. Leave uh, me alone. When, Quit but stealing my money. It, it, it gets worse, Josh, because when the people were asked back in 1967 whether or not they wanted a borough, the people of Fairbanks said no, no. and the state imposed it anyway. So, I, I mean, at, at, what, at, at some point, we either have to choose. I want to, King George back. <laughs> my the colonists had it made. Yeah, 17, they started a war. 1775, uh, taxes in the United States, or taxes, I should say, in, in, the, in the North colonies? American part of whatever, you know, that became the United States was never lower than in 1775. It was at 3%, I believe. And that was only on certain goods. Certain it, goods. Taxes were higher in 1776 and onward every single year than they were in 1775. The colonists had it made. They had a tyrant that lived 6,000 miles away, and there was only one. And everyone was focused on that tyrant because they knew we got that stinking King George and he wants to screw us, and he's after us, and he wants our money. He and wants us to be safe. Now we have thousands of tyrants at every level. You have thousands of them that can take your property. And we can all aspire to become knows. one, too. right? Isn't that what, yes. you know, anybody can grow up to become president of the United States. <laughs> what a disgusting aspiration. <laughs> uh, the chat room, Johnny says here uh, that he was told by the IRS that the Constitution doesn't apply to them. Well, it doesn't. They're not a federal agency. I mean, that's a, probably another show on itself, but the Federal Reserve is not the federal government. It's a private bank. I mean, they say it out loud. Bernanke says it on the TV. I'm a private bank. Yeah, they were chartered, right? They were chartered by the federal government, but they exist separately. The IRS is just the collection arm of the Federal Reserve. 